look, y'all can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at B Fred Jones. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. On Instagram, underscore G Sports with a Z on the end. And on Twitter, G underscore sports with a Z on the end. You can follow me on Instagram at big underscore homie underscore hen. And on Twitter at heyyou15. Jalen Cook, Tulane Point Guard. Y'all listening to the FanView Podcast. Episode six, man, we got Jalen Cook in the building. He been a fan of this show. I ain't gonna lie. Jalen been he done some episodes. Yeah, he done been on yeah. here like he been on here like two about two, two times. times. This is third time in the building, live in the flesh, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm that boy Fred G Sports back at it again. <sighs> Come along with it. Still striving. We elevated, we elevated, we elevated it. The, the podcast right quick. Yes, we going into 2023. You know. Doing new things, new doing things. bigger things. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> First game back last night. 23 20, points. 22 points. Got the dub against uh College of Charleston. Uh, you know, y'all off to 2-0, 3-0. 3-0 start. 3-0 start. Uh, man, just talk about, you know, third year of college. Uh, you know, first team all-conference last year, man. And, and look like. Y'all taking this two-lane program into, into a better direction than it's ever been before, before Ron Hunter got there, man. And uh, it seemed like you ready to take your, your game to a whole nother level this shit, man. Just talk about last night and, and you know, what you expect from the two-lane Greenway program and shit. Oh, man, last night it was good. You no, know, felt good coming back off of injury and stuff. So just trying to get back in the groove of things, you know. Uh, I feel like our team going in the right direction. You know, just uh, staying focused, really. Just, um, you know, just trying to trying to create a winning culture and stuff. You know, because, you know, right. not, a, not a fan of losing. So Right, that right. It is. Just trying to come out and make a statement. You know, put in a lot of work in the summer and off season. So just got to come out, be focused. You know, there's nothing new. Yeah, you know, now, you came off the bench last night, right? Yeah, so how that feeling was? You not used to that? Nah, he ain't used to that. Right? How that was? Used to that. How that was? Uh, it was, it was, it was good. I mean, I came off the bench at LSU, so <laughs> stuff like that. So, <laughs> so I mean, it, was, it was, it was, it was fine. I mean, I wasn't tripping. So, uh, I mean, what you was nine for twelve last night? Mm-hmm. Nine for twelve, very efficient. How hard was that, man? Missing the first two games of the right. season, and you didn't get to play in the exhibition games. Mm-hmm. Coming off the bench and being able to make an impact like that, score twenty three points, and be efficient. You know, most people, man, they miss them. They miss two or three games. Right. They need about twenty shots to get to some twenty some points. You know, first game back, man. How you was shots. able to just come out there and, and you know be efficient like that, and, and, and still be able to get the dub along with scoring over twenty points. Right. Like mm-hmm. Just. Keeping myself locked in, really, just staying focused, uh, trusting the work. Remember, remember my touch. And, you know, just nothing new. I've been hooping all my life, so it's like, <laughs> you know, nothing, nothing. Just keeping it, keeping a level head for real. Now that Jalen, I want to talk. This is your third year of college basketball, man. Just mm-hmm. talk about how each year has, you know, been a little different. Obviously, your first year you started off at LSU, right. and obviously you transferred. And you ended up at two last year. Last year, you put a lot of people on notice, bro. <laughs> I'm just being mm-hmm. honest with you. Now you got this year, y'all starting off 3 no. But talk about your whole college experience so far in terms of how you've matured and how your game has just elevated to what it's become. Yeah, it's, it's been – it's really been a cool experience, I'll say. You know, my first year being with guys like Javante Smart, Cam Thomas, Trenton Wofford, Days, Will Wade, uh, Tasman Mitchell, you know, dudes like that. I feel like, you know, it wasn't a loss because I didn't play as much. It was really just, I really just learned from, learned a lot, you know, right. learned how to carry myself, how to handle things, you know, 
you know, there's it, it, it a lot of good people in that organization. So, uh, you know, things ain't go how I wanted it to go, but I thought moving to Tulane would be a good decision. And, you know, last year I feel like I made a statement, the statement I wanted to make, you know. Yeah, you made one. You know, <laughs> just, <laughs> just you know. And uh, after, after that first year, it taught me a lot. You know, watching Cam Thomas, you know, he he worked a lot on, like, just the way he carried himself, you know, his technique, stuff like that. So I feel like, you know, after I transferred, got a lot of work in, really just sharpening my craft, sharpening my game. You know, that carried on at Tulane, and, you know, just wanted to go out and make a statement and kill. I mean, it was – you know, I always thought I was going to, you know – be, you know, kill, you know. Right. So, right. It's just Mom getting that mentality. opportunity and, you know, trusting the coach and stuff and just going out there and just being me, really. Uh, and now, third year, you know, got a lot of work in this off season. Went to Costa Rica, uh, put in work out there. Right. So, you know, it's, it's different now because I, I haven't been injured at all my whole life. So now it's just really just focusing on, you know, Stretching, stretching, rehabbing, yeah. and things like that. You know, just resting and being patient for real. Knowing your body, and you know, just thinking, thinking right for real. Yeah, because you now you, you you by you you they looking up to you now. Right, right. It, it's different when you were probably at LSU. You that freshman coming in the room. You seen Javante Small. You seen a lot of other different guys in that room. But now, people are looking at you as the guy. You know, mm-hmm. you know, you got freshmen coming in there. You know. I'm trying to see how Jalen Cook prepare. I'm yeah. trying to see how Jalen Cook do things, yeah. right? You get me? I'm trying to see how. Right. Now, to you, you probably have a different focus. You probably, I got to go out here and kill and do something. But now, people are modeling how you play this game because you the junior now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You ain't the you ain't the little boy on the block no more. You've been around this block for some time. Man, that brings me to my next point. That LSU team, your freshman year, was really, really talented. Yeah. I, I actually thought y'all underachieved. I thought that team Thanks. from on paper. And just the talent y'all had, y'all should have at least got to the Elite Eight Final Four. There was a lot going sure. on behind the scenes, G Sports. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. A lot of egos. But, yeah. uh, man, talk about the practices. You know, Javante Smart, uh, Trenton Walford, Cam, mm-hmm. Thomas. Cam Thomas. That's that's three pros right there. Right. And, and you know, Darius Days, we know he ain't no slouch. Right. Um, uh, Eric Gaines, who came in with you. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a lot of right. talent to players on that roster. So how was practice? How was those battles, and how did that get you better? You know, to to be able to go to Tulane and doing what you do now. Yeah, practices was crazy. I ain't gonna cap. That was, that was tough. I mean, it was fun though. It's just like I had to guard Javante every day. Right. Sometimes Cam, and it's just like trending. You know, trending. Mm-hmm. He and that talking trash every yep. day. Yep. <laughs> Everybody going back and forth. We had Charles Manning too. Charles Jay. Manning, forgot yeah. about Charles Manning. So he 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 was one of the vets. So you know he was going through stuff. So he was on our team. So he was going back and forth with them. So it just was battles at practice. You know we used to get at them. They used to get at us. You know it was good just just seeing how uh, they prepare. You know just really a highlight really was Cam. You know he. The stuff he did at and during the game, he was doing in practice. So it was just like wasn't no surprise to you. Yeah, it wasn't no surprise at all. And it's Wade, been all y'all don't know is that practice, letting y'all know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Letting y'all know. All right, Wade, Wade going crazy every day, you know. But you know, it, it really, it, I think it, was, I think it was a great experience to you know get those type of practices in my first year of college, and you know play, play, play at that level. But it was a high level, high level of basketball being played. Like me and Gaines, we was tough together. Like yeah. that's like he me doing his thing at UAB yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. Like, like we we wanted to rock out last year, but we was tough together for sure. So, you know, it wasn't really no, you know, it was it was really like competition in there. So right. it was it was good competition. I would say at the practices and stuff. You know, trend like I say, trend talking talking trash all yeah. day. Yeah. So it was, it was tough. I seen you went to go uh, watch the Blazers play and, and got to see Trenton Wofford, uh when that was a week ago mm-hmm. when, they, when they came yeah, play the Pelicans. Yep. Um, do you stay? Do you still stay in contact with Trenton Wofford and Cam Thomas and kind of just y'all kind of like keeping track of what each other doing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, me and Trent, we talk 
every other day. So, you know, Cam don't really talk that much. So he he to himself, but right. he know what it is. He know what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, it's, it's, I still I'm still in communication. Devontae Devontae called me after my game last night. Mm -hmm. You know, so and he was only I think he had signed. Wait, well, I think he got released from the Pelicans, but I think he had signed like a. He had signed some sort of deal with the Pelicans. Mm -hmm. He in Texas right now. They had a game last night. So, so he in the G League. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Who under Pelicans? Under the Pelicans. Oh, so he under the Pelicans G League team. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yep. So last year he was with the Heat. The Heat. Right. And then I know, like in the middle of the season, he was with the Bucks. Bucks, the something Bucks, like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you ask those guys pro questions? Like, man, how is it to prepare for games? How for game planning, practice. Um, taking care of your body, like, do you ask right. those guys those type of questions to kind of like get you prepared for that moment? Yeah, you know, you know, I ask a lot of questions. Yeah, so, like I'm curious, so you know, I ask them. I ask them all that. Like, how I asked Bonte, you know, how how Jimmy Butler was. Like, like he was like he tough, like strong. I I asked him how how it was how how PJ Tucker. Like they used to go, they used to play ones. You know, he PJ Tucker got good D. Like how it is going against him. You know, stuff like that. Ask Trent, like, how, how D. Lil is in practice, how what he do, you know. Right. You know, just how the speed of the game and, you know. I asked him, about, I asked him about a, lot, a whole lot of questions, for real. Do you think – I be talking reckless. I be like, let him know I'm coming. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> let him know I'm coming. He be like, watch footage. <laughs> do you think those guys have had a humbling experience? Cam Thomas was that guy coming out of high school from mm -hmm. Oak Hill. Mm -hmm. And he came to LSU, he was that guy. Javante been that guy all his life. All his life. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Trenton Walford, McDonald's All-American, he was that guy. Mm -hmm. And all three of them, Javante in the G League, Trent coming off the bench, Cam coming off the bench, and they not necessarily getting the minutes they probably think they deserve. Right. How, how do you think that has I think they're going to change them? for Cam huh? sometime soon. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. But how do you think that has humbled them <laughs> You know, as basketball players, uh, I mean, it definitely humbled them. I say, I mean, you know, this is how basketball is. I mean, you know, they 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 built for it. I right. say that because right. you know they didn't seen everything. They didn't been that guy. So, I think I think all three of them gonna persevere through whatever they going through because you know they they they've been playing basketball at a high level all their life. So, I think they all got their head on straight. Um, like I said, you know, you know, it's, it's basketball is time timetable. So yeah. you know what I mean, yeah, you know, I think they're gonna last. It got it got its ups and downs. It got sure. ups and downs. Like sometimes mm -hmm. you just you gotta capitalize on your moment when it's time for you to kill. Then you know, sometimes at the pro level, it's somebody else's turn. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, then it's somebody else's turn. Then sometimes you just kind of kind of wait your turn to get your mm -hmm. opportunity to play. And some people, I, th I feel like some people don't know how to handle success. Like. There'll be some person you haven't seen and that'll kill, and they don't know how to handle it. They'll kill and stop putting in work, and they let them it'll get to their head, and they'll start doing all kinds of and other complacent. stuff. Complacent, right? So I feel like you know the, them ones are gonna always stand out. Like, what's the drill that y'all probably look forward to, like in practice? Is it is it the ones? Is it five on five? Like, mm -hmm. what's the thing y'all probably taking out of practice that kind of lets people know that? He that guy, or he ain't what people make him out to be. Uh, it, it, I say the five, five on five drills. Really, you know, they they really see who 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 gonna bump, who gonna bump when it's time. Like, I say that the five on five drills. You know, the ones, the ones too. You got, you got, you know, you got to be able to get buckets. But that and, and and just getting up shots too. Like, who makes shots? You know. Make a mislead. <laughs> it's a make a mislead. What is it? I, I, I do want to ask you this, Jalen. So, when kids are coming up, mm -hmm. you know, and I can, I can speak from my experiences with my son. My son, 12 years old. He's going to be 13 in January. Odds are, <laughs> based off of my side of the family, his mama's side of the family, <laughs> he's not going to be that tall. <laughs> right? <laughs> and so... <laughs> I hope I hope I'm wrong about that. He got a genetic battle. <laughs> he got a genetic I, battle. You know, I hope I'm wrong about that. I hope he's sprout up. Mm -hmm. We'll see. And a lot of kids have those hoop dreams, right? Mm -hmm. But when you look in the NBA and you look at high level basketball, man, you got point guards, shooting guards at six five, 
six four six six. Right. You don't really see too many guards that's six feet and under that's flourishing on that level. If you do, they're special like yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, how have you been able all your life? You've been, you know, right, you know, probably one of the smallest players on the court. Right. How have you been able to play at such a high level? Not only from you know when you was in middle school. You know, then when you got to high school, people were saying, well, he ain't going to do it when he got to high school. You started mm -hmm. as a freshman, right. you know, led your team to a state championship as a sophomore. Mm -hmm. Then people was like, okay, he going to go on, a, on one of these shoe circuits. He ain't going to do that on a shoe circuit. circuit. You balled on a shoe circuit, had multiple offers. Mm -hmm. You signed with LSU. Yeah, I know things didn't go the way you wanted. To, you it didn't go the way you wanted to go with LSU, but I think it was more based off of you didn't have the opportunity. Right. right yeah. uh, and I'll say it was, it was on me too a little bit. Okay, accountability. For yeah, sure. <laughs> for sure. But <laughs> if, I would, if I could have did things differently, I would have. What right. you could did different? Put in more. I think I would have stayed in the gym more instead of like worrying about like the outside of LSU. I mean, it, it's fun though, it, like because it, it's my it's, dream it, it, school. It's, so, it's, I mean, it's it a power cool. five. It's, 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 but just I think I should have been more like business like, like. Trying to go in like strictly on basketball, a pro side, a pro like mindset, yeah. yeah. Um, but I was young, so I mean, you learn from it. Yeah. But now you're at Tulane, and this is you know for people that don't understand, this is a tough conference. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Houston, Houston, Memphis, Memphis. You know what I'm saying? SMU. There's some really good teams in this conference, and also when y'all schools y'all playing nine conference, mm -hmm. you have still been able to play at a high level against some of these. High major schools. How have you? How have you been able to silence all the naysayers on each level? You know, since you've been playing basketball since middle school. I think it all started with my family, really. Fam God, family, my pops. You know, my pops stayed up on, stayed on me. Like I started tr training and like, you know, working on my ball handling and stuff when I was like four, th three or four. four? Yeah, three you, or four. Do you remember that? I kind of do a little bit. <laughs> like a oh, you gotta, he got to go back and show you some videos. Now, I remember I remember me putting in work when I was young. My but son was building Legos with that fool. Don't let touch the ball. <laughs> Trying to dribble it. He dribbled in two hands. I think that's the <laughs> difference. I think, like, yeah. the younger you start, especially when you got the genetics, and you, you're probably going to be a little shorter than a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though height really, it really doesn't mean anything if you know how to play defense and you know how to play the game, but... You got to start. You got to start young, you know. Like, when you're younger, when you're shorter, you got to be able to handle the ball and, like, be able to go wherever you want with the ball, like, stuff like that. Like, I feel like, you know, you just got to – you want to – you want to – you can you can do whatever you put your mind to. So, you got to but, – but you got to put in a lot of work, you know, when, uh, when, when you're not 6'6 six, six or 6'8, six, stuff like that. So, did your dad have to push you? Or were or were you one of those kids that was asking your dad to get you in the gym? I was one of my kids. I was one of them kids that was asking my pops for real. But he did push me as well. So that's one of the things about basketball, man. At an early age, you know, because I played basketball a lot as a when I got to high school, I kind of broke my ankle, and that was it. Mm -hmm. um, but the kids who really play it early, it's like they gravitate to it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it's not like baseball or basketball or other sports. Uh, you know, basketball is one of those things where if you play it a lot as a kid, you just gravitate to it. Football is a little different. You play it, and when other kids stop playing, you stop playing because you need people. Mm -hmm. Basketball, you could really – you could gravitate because you could play by yourself. That's a good point. You could play by yourself. You could just right. take you and the goal, and you could just hoop. Right. Football, Football, you need other people. You to need help other you. people. Yeah. Baseball, you need other people. And when the other people want to go do something else, you could just like, man, forget football. That's a good right. point. Basketball, you could sit up there in the gym by yourself for hours. Or you, <laughs> could just stay like, out, you could just stand outside dribbling the rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going to the need, street. You don't need other people. Like I've been, I've been listening to a lot of Kobe, Kobe videos and like Kobe quotes and stuff like that. So like, and it's like, like how he he say like. Basketball was his like escape, like, like yeah. on the court, like mm -hmm. when he get on the court, like he just he can speak to everything in his life, and like I, I kind of look back at that and it's like, yeah, that's kind of how I felt every time I got on the court and like every time I hoop, like it's just like, 
You it's dismiss really, everything what's going yeah, on. Whatever really, you got really going through in your personal everything. life. You can yeah. just channel it off. You can just cut it off. It's like your therapy. Like right. some people go work out. Some people do other things. Like It's like that gym is like, oh, it's therapy session. Yeah, like, this is like, I'm, I'm here to get this is what I know. Like, it's home. So it's like, mm-hmm. it's like different. So. Do you pay attention to the landscape of the NBA? And I know me and you talk about this all the time. <laughs> uh, I remember like, I think this might have been when you was playing 16s mm-hmm. on the Under Armour circuit. And I was like, man, you know who you remind me of? <laughs> and he got offended. <laughs> he was like, who? I said, man, you remind me of Kyle Lowry. He was like, Kyle Lowry? <laughs> I'm like, bro. Oh, I What's said, wrong Kyle Lowry? the Kyle Lowry you thinking about right now, this is not the Kyle Lowry that I remember when he went to Villanova. Villanova. Mm-hmm. I mean, right? Villanova I'm in like, Houston. Yeah, then. I'm like, well, the, the Kyle Lowry you know kind of overweight now. Yeah. He's still going to play. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> He still go hoop, right? But that ain't the Kyle Lowry yeah, I'm talking about. The Kyle, Kyle Lowry Villanova, Villanova. That's who you remind me of. But him and Randy Foy, no? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Alan Ray, Alan Ray, the boy went to a Final Four. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Nice. yeah. but when you look at the landscape of the league, uh, you know you got Van Fleet, yeah, there with the Raptors. You got mm-hmm. Kyle Lowry. You got Tyus Jones, Trey Jones. You got Darius Garland. No, I'm talking about small guards. Small guards. Small, small guards. Yeah, small guards. DG. Tough. Dead Gordon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alvarado. Yeah. For the Pelicans. Yeah. Uh, it ain't that many. Chris Paul's short. Mm-hmm. Chris Paul. I mean, we can't. We can't. Yeah, yeah. Chris Paul. Can't count Chris Paul. Chris Paul just right. He in the hole in the Stratosphere. Does. Gotcha. But what I'm saying is, do you pay attention to the landscape of the league and say there's not? And and and, and, and another point about those guards I'm naming, none of them play above the rim. Right, right, and so that's another thing I always put into yeah. account when I'm talking about Jalen. Do you do you do you pay attention to that, to that in the league and say to yourself, "I right, like them guys made it. I could be one of them. I know it ain't that many, but I could be one of them guys that have a role in the league and, and make an impact like they do." Mm, I, I think, of, of course, I pay attention to it for sure. Like, I mean, I'd be dumb if I didn't. Like, right. I mean that, that 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 definitely give me confidence. I mean, I feel like I mean, I mean I mean I've been playing AAU and stuff my whole life, so it's like I've been I've been seeing the competition like my whole life. For I real. remember when you and Jalen Suggs used to have them battles. Yeah, like I've been playing in Suggs whole life. Yeah, like, for the so raw like, pick. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They uh, used to go at it. I remember when Suggs was like number one in the country when he was like a fourth, third grade, like just going to them nationals, like. I was I was I was at the nationals and stuff like that, so it was just like it's not really new to me. So it's like I feel like I could play play with anybody. You played against Anthony Edwards too, huh? Yeah, I played against. I played yeah, against what, uh, Atlanta Express. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. That was my uh, when I played sixteens mm-hmm. with Joe with Joe right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So basically, you know. When you when you see these elite basketball players, this ain't nothing new to you. Right. Right. That's why when you got the LSU, when you playing against the Javante Smalls and the Trenton Wildfoots and the and you're the not Cam Thomases, you're not in all. You're not like, oh man, he's. yeah. I wasn't like you know, yeah. you know, like, and then my guys. So it was like when I had first got there. I think that summer, it was me. Vontae, Trent, and Sky, we ever played ones at Pre- at Madison. Sky Lamese? Mm-hmm. So I really seen, like, I really seen them. So, and I, I competed with them. So it was like, yeah, like, I just got to put in the work, keep right. working and stuff. Right. Now, when you look at a lot of these guys that you played against, that when you were coming up, obviously you mentioned Anthony Edwards. You mentioned Jalen Anthony Edwards was the first overall pick in his class. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jalen Suggs was you know, fourth overall to, to Orlando. Um. When you start thinking about a lot of guys you competed against, mm-hmm. where do you think you stack? I know that's a competitor. We all kind of think about where we stack against a lot of those guys. Where do you mm-hmm. think you stack? You competed against, but where do you think you stack? When you look at some of those guys and you see where they're playing at and you think about yourself, where do you think you fall into those, those guys? You know, I'm a realist, so I can see I can see where people may think, you know, athleticism might, might, might mm-hmm. play a role, but I feel like I stack. I feel like I feel like I'm better than them guys for real. Like I mean, that's the mindset I, I have. I mean, I know people might be like, "Yeah, he's crazy," he, but I feel like I feel like I'm better than them because I, I mean, I played with them, I, I competed with them. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
No. I feel like if if you put them in front of me, I can stop them. And, you know, I feel like I can get a bucket on, on them. So that's just that's just how I feel. So you, you do feel like sometimes whether it's a pro scout or people in the media, right. they get caught up with measurables. Yeah, for sure. And athleticism versus, man, can this guy really play? Yeah, like can sure. can he can he stand in front of his man? Will, will he make the right basketball play? Right. Is he a hard worker? Is he a good teammate? Like all the intangible Angibles. things. Mm-hmm. Like like Steph Curry is arguably top ten ever, and yep. he doesn't he doesn't dunk the ball every, sport every game. Yeah, I disagree with that. But I think he right outside the top right. ten. <laughs> <laughs> I think he right outside the top yeah. ten. Kyrie Irving, he won the top. Top, top, point, top ten point guards ever. He doesn't, he doesn't dunk the ball. Hold on, Jalen. Nah, hold on. See, hold, nah, hold, nah, hold, we, hold. we just had like, an argument about this, right? Hold, hold of, and I am so Kyrie Irving has been in the league eleven years. Top ten point guard ever. Kyrie. Hold up. Hold up. Kyrie oh. Irving has been in the in the NBA for eleven years. Yes. Eight of those years. Eight of his years. He didn't play sixty games. Not eight, not only that. Eight of mm-hmm. the years. What has he done outside of the three years he played with LeBron James? He changed the game. His first four years in the league with Cleveland, he didn't even win thirty games. He couldn't win. At, he couldn't win thirty that. games in the East. Hold on, when Jimmy. the East see, is terrible. See, this is why I think. Of, see, this Bro, is, yeah, he got a ring though, like because like, of LeBron, because his daddy, because of just, LeBron just, James. Just, just the way he hoop. Like I feel like he one of the one of the most if diverse, you see, diverse hoopers that we've ever seen for sure. If, 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 if with, with the wants, ball for sure. If somebody wants to see. That Kyrie, I mean, maybe, maybe, probably not winning wise, you know him, but just, just God putting a hooper on the on the, on the on the earth. I feel like he's one of he's one of the most diverse hoopers. For when sure. you talk about talent, I can I can agree to that, but unfortunately, talent alone doesn't get right. it done Here's the in the NBA. Facts, facts. Y'all, y'all, it's it's y'all, not good enough. Y'all, y'all, new generation kids are princes of the moment. Let me tell y'all something. Let me just kind of back this train up on Kyrie Irving, and I'm a Dow Hard Duke fan. I don't know why. <laughs> Listen, I think he's a heck of a basketball player. Mm-hmm. But I watch Steven, I watch the franchise. Guy who could dribble, guy who could dunk. Steve, uh, Steve, Steve Francis. Francis. That's, a, that's a good point you're about to make. I've watched Steve Francis. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be frankly honest with you. I don't know if you remember Steve Francis. I remember. He, Kyrie Irving may have lasted longer than the NBA, but when they, I'm talking about as a superstar, he wasn't a better superstar than him. He was not. I just don't like how people discredit what Curry did. What he did? What he did? He got a ring. So let me ask you this: this man, Why? He, he hit, why he hit the game winning shot okay. against the Warriors? I got a if question. Brian don't have a player like Kyrie to make shots like that, he don't win the finals against Brian, the Warriors. Brian has won. He don't. Without Kyrie. He made the full finals before he got to Cleveland. Brian had. He didn't win. He won two in Miami, and he went to the finals in Cleveland. Oh, oh, nah, Brian. Nobody there. Brian, one of the greatest ever for sure, but. Like he he probably is like he top he top three for sure. Brian won without Kyrie. Kyrie has never won outside of Brian. I love, I love Brian game for this, sure. This like, the thing though. This Kyrie the thing. Irving top ten point guard. This the thing though. He top he top he top fifteen for sure. Talented Indeed. wise, talented wise. See we see his thing. I asked him this. I asked him this not too long ago. He went to the Celtics. His first year with the Celtics, he was hurt. They made it to the game seven. Of yeah. the conference final against LeBron James. James and lost and lost the the they following can, the year of Tatum and Brown the following year he's healthy they lose four one in the first round with the same team what's the common denominator I got a question for you do you think Kyrie Irving crickets is a I'm not talking about career I'm talking about when they both was in their prime you think he was better than Darren Williams. Both in the prom. From a talented standpoint, he is. From a point guard standpoint. Yeah, I would want I would want Darren Williams running my team before Kyrie Irving. Yeah, definitely. I, mean, I don't have Darren Williams in my top it's, ten. It's like, I think he's you a can't really guard. you can't really say, bro. Like you really can't. Like, it's about playing winning basketball. It's because Kyrie got a ring, so it's like, how can <laughs> you, you keep? I like Kyrie was hurt. Rings. Kyrie was hurt in the finals the first year they went to the ring. The first year, Kyrie was hurt. Kyrie and Ky- Kevin Love was hurt. They both was hurt, right? Yeah. right. They lost. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. okay. He's out there with Matthew Delavadova. I know. Next year, Kyrie was killing, and, and they won. Took, and it's I mean, took, Brian gonna kill for sure. Brian, like Brian is going to kill. Like, like Brian is going to kill, but he needed 
a Kyrie to go get 40 alongside of him to win. Kyrie has never won outside of LeBron James. I'm LeBron I know James has won outside of Kyrie Irving. I know. So if, if LeBron never said, I mean, you can say that you can home. say that about a lot of guards. A lot of guards you say is better than Kyrie. They haven't won. You can say that about a lot of guards. Do 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 Steve Francis have Steve Francis got a ring? No, no. Steve Darren, Nash? Darren Williams got a ring? No. no. Steve Nash? No. No. Well, it's like, but I mean, you can I say mean, that about Darren a Pate lot of guards. Kevin Payton don't have a ring. What he do? He do. I'm sorry. He do. That, that don't count. <laughs> yeah, I want the heat. That don't count. <laughs> that don't count. <laughs> But I think Gary Payton was a better point guard than Kyrie Irving. I think I think I think yeah. Kyrie Irving is a better ball talent than than Gary Payton, but he's not a better point guard. Right. I mean, it's just Kyrie. Kyrie, if he Kyrie, if Kyrie had his head on straight, he'd be one of the best ever. I feel like. I mean, he shouldn't have left Brian, but he wanted to go to his own. He had he Kevin out. Durant as teammate he's, last he's, year he's, and got swept. He got yes. That says a lot. Man wasn't eating in the in the playoffs, bro. He ain't eat. How he supposed to win and he don't eat? How it's, you how you get it's swept? Just, it, with Kevin Durant as your team. Just as much as his team. No, you can't win. One you game, the team is Kevin Durant. You can't win a game if you ain't eating food, bro. <laughs> he vegan. He ain't had no energy. You might have told him to go vegan. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody, but look, but in the playing game when they played the Cavs and he went off for like thirty seven. And everybody was like, oh, boy, y'all better watch out for the next. Kyrie and them coming. And then in game one, when he was killing like against I the said, Celtics, everybody was like, boy, y'all see Kyrie, huh? Like I said, bro, he ain't eat. So it's like, if he was on a <laughs> he good eat, diet. He just not eating meat. If he was on a, <laughs> if he was on a good <laughs> diet. It, it, it like ain't it nobody went. thought he not getting them cheeseburgers from McDonald's. That's on him. <laughs> he won't go vegan. That, that's the cost. Look, I feel like, and I know this kind of like going to another subject, but I feel like that's why Tyron Matthew not having the, the year he's supposed to have. Going well, vegan too? Because he went vegan. Oh, yeah. yeah. Listen, Tyron Chad, Matthew has Chad always Johnson been. told y'all about all this. Tyron Matthew has always been a sure tackler. Man, this shit. Why this he is, went vegan? Man, I guess to just. I went vegan a little bit uh, in May. How, how that worked out for you? Hamstring. It was all right. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't know me at all? <laughs> no, nah, I, I wasn't. I wasn't on it like G. strict. G. But I did, I did it a couple days. G. Hammy. <laughs> Got a hammy. <laughs> no, my hammy. I, I heard my hammy last year. That, but. <laughs> That's why it's taking so long for it to get back 100%. Because yeah. you went vegan for a little yeah, while. Probably. Yeah. Vegan but, and sports don't match up, bro. Listen, I remember Jaleel Okafor mm -hmm. went vegan when he started going pro, pro basketball. You don't understand this. When he was in. I never knew that. He's vegan. He's the number one pick in the draft, He's huh? Third pick. Yeah. Third pick. Third pick in that, in that draft. So the Bobcats? No, he went to. Um, Jaleel Okafor went to um, Philly. No. Oh, Jaleel Okafor. I'm thinking about Omeka. You think about Omeka? Yeah, Jaleel Okafor. Jaleel, Showed it. Yeah, Jaleel. Showed it. Showed Omeka it. was second overall to the Bobcats. Right. Bob behind Bobcats. Dwight Howard. Right, right, right. Jaleel right, right, Okafor, right. if I do. Oh, he's a vegan. People understand. I, I didn't know that. How much he slimmed up when he got to the NBA. He was right. huge at Duke. With him and Justice Winlow. And, yeah. Uh, and, they won a natty. They won a natty. Ty Jones. Ty Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. He wasn't the same. He wasn't the same. Mm -hmm. He would not. He was not the same. Now I don't think people are really talking about this with pro athletes. I never knew that. He's vegan. Never knew that. Yeah, I ain't know that. Slimmed up, and he turned like his game got finesse. He got finesse when he got to the league, and that wasn't his game in college. You, damn, I never knew that. Slimmed up. That's a good point. Vegan. I'm like, I don't know what's up with athletes and going vegan, but I, my suggestion is start this after you retire. I agree. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I think Melo had went vegan for a little while. Melo slimmed up. Melo went vegan, and that's when he got. Out the league. Out the league. <laughs> Look like he started eating meat again. That's when he started hooping with the Lakers yeah, last year. I wasn't, I wasn't messing with the vegan. That's, yeah. That's different. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm cool with not eating pork and all that. I get that part. Man, I got to eat that chicken. Got to have the chicken. Right. Got to have that chicken. I feel like you can watch the way you eat and then you'll be good. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I look at it. Ain't no, ain't no tombstone saying, hey, listen, man, he, 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 he didn't eat meat. You know what I'm saying? All that. <laughs> now, now, this take me to my next point. Everybody in America... Paid attention to what happened with Draymond Green and Jordan Poole in the preseason. <laughs> yeah. Right? And I've been talking to a lot of different, like, former athletes and, and athletes that's playing right now. Mm -hmm. Have you ever experienced anything like that? Like, not saying somebody points you like that, mm -hmm. but all the sports teams you played on, uh, football, basketball, high school, circuit, you know, LSU, Tulane, whatever. Mm -hmm. Have you ever, ever experienced, without saying any names, Something like that in practice? Or like after a game or before a game? 
I mean, is that normal? I got into it with one of my teammates, you know, back in the previous times, but it ain't go like that. I mean, punches went thrown. Yeah, but I mean, they, they, had, they had a whole. I, I feel like I feel like Draymond got the right to do that because of like seniority. Yeah, like he man got four rings, and I feel like he and man felt some type of way. Like Pool, Pool just got in the lead. Pool probably, Pool probably was in there trying to, you know, capping off, capping off, stunning, and then you know it happened. I mean, it's over with now. So I mean, yeah. Uh, so Ooh. so Nickel State head coach Austin Clones came on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, uh-huh. and we was talking to him about it, and he said, and I'm paraphrasing, right. He embraced that kind of friction with his teams. Yes, he he felt like the best teams have some type of controversy and friction. He said, but as long as y'all don't take it past the lines. Right. Don't get me wrong. Like, dude, dude just want to come in there and just hit somebody for no reason. Like, that's, that's, yeah, that's flunky. Like, that's right. flunkish. Like, right. for, for sure. Like, we're like, what you on? Like, you, you know, you need to be out here. Like, but, dude, like, Draymond. I feel like he ain't throw it off. Like he he right. gonna do that for. Now a he reason. is a little high headed now. Now he now he high headed for sure. But like he 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 respect basketball. Like LeBron, one of his favorite players. Like yeah, yeah. even after all the stuff he even went through mm-hmm. playing against him and stuff. So I feel like he got respect. So I feel like he he did that for a reason. I feel like like it had to be like some type of some some behind it. And but, I watched he did like a like a forty minute press conference maybe like the next week and. uh he gave the whole spill about how he felt and how he was sorry. And, you know, the, the media was trying to ask him certain questions to get his, get his words twisted up. Mm-hmm. He did a great job answering those questions. But I read between the lines. I think Kyrie need to take some notes. <laughs> <laughs> but I read between the lines. And it's evident to me that Jordan Poole must have did something out of line or said something out of line for Draymond to react the way he reacted. I think Because he, said. he didn't want to come out and say what Jordan Poole did and said, but... You could tell if you really listening that look, if it was one of y'all, y'all probably would have did the same thing. Mm-hmm. Know, what, know what he's saying? Let me tell you what he's trying to tell you. Let's just keep this a thousand. We're on a fan view podcast. Joe Poole said some words that they got somebody in the street head knocked off. And this is what happened now the setting. And mm-hmm. you thinking that it's all good in here. And let me show you it ain't. Right. You tripping. <laughs> you he, I, I, the way the way that happened and the way he cause you could th- th- think about the way he walked up to him. Right. He walked up to him like like he must have said something to trigger something to say. He flipped. You think I wouldn't fold you? Yeah. Like, Let you you think he flipped? Gonna, gonna save you? He definitely flipped. And he hit him with the thought of, I'm not playing with you mm-hmm. in this moment. Like, right. Whatever barrier you cross, you tripping. Mm-hmm. You ain't earned that. Right, you know and, I, I mean? and I and I and I remember, and I like, you know, he apologized. Cause I think he probably felt like, okay, I got, I let whatever emotion it was, get the best of me. Mm-hmm. But Draymond Green, when he went, I don't want to use the word hood, but he, he he went to a setting where you know what, he got him out of character. He got him out of character. <laughs> he got him out of character. Like you know what, we ain't gonna let this one slide. This this is this is how we handle this. From where I'm from, this is how this handled. Right. right. <laughs> And you a light skinned fella. <laughs> you don't know how this go. Right. <laughs> but let me show you how this go. And so I think now he's like, look, I'm not that man no more. I, I'm out of character. But from where I'm from, anybody would have handled that the way I handled that. Right. And it's like <laughs> I remember I remember Draymond saying like he like kind of like mentored Pool. Yeah, he did. Up. he did. He said that. So it he was like that. it was kind of weird. He said he was advocating for him when they sent him to the G League. He mm-hmm. said he was going to Bob Myers and Steve Kerr. I'm like, man, what y'all doing? This dude could hoop. Like, we, we could use him. He could help right. us. And uh, he mm-hmm. said, like, Bob Myers, I'm listening to him, man. Shit, you see what Jordan Poole been doing? Yeah. I mean, like I said, Poole, Poole be getting it in. Um, Poole, and listen, if you look at the way he plays the game, he, he plays at a certain pace. And I think what helps his game so much is that he's a, he's a very effective you know, mid-range and three-point shooter to where it allows him to get that space. But right. He could get to the basket. A they be calling time, a lot of carrying on him this year. Of course, because what he does. It seemed like the referees, like, been making that a point of emphasis 
to call that carrot because I seen one game he got called for carrot like four times. True. Yeah, I, f- I think they was playing the Heat. Mm-hmm. They called carry on, carry on him like four times throughout that whole game, and uh, can't do that. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, man, one of them was so bad. Like, I wish we could pull a clip up right now. One of them, he like grabbed it, held it, like took two steps, then put it down. I was Bro, like, it's crazy. It's crazy that we talking about this because in May when I when I was in Cali, I actually worked out that whole month with his trainer, and For we real? worked on that move. Like it's crazy. It's like a little in and out. Yeah, the yeah. in and out. Yeah. Like. It's a carry, but like we really worked on that move. Yeah. But like Draymond said, Draymond said, man, y'all ain't been calling this. People right. been carrying. Like Chris Paul do it a lot too. Chris Paul right. don't do the in and out. Chris Paul, like, he palm it. He palm it. Mm-hmm. And he'll take two steps and man, that shit, that shit hard to go at. Of course. If anybody can that shit hard anybody to guard, bro. palm the ball and take two steps and you actually defend it. And, and you that super quick. Yeah. Like and you and put the ball back on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> like no. man, that shit hard to guard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. What do? Yeah, James Harden carry a lot. You know? He's been carrying his whole career. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do want to ask you this, though, Cook. Three swag schools have beaten three Pac-12 teams over yeah. the last two weeks. That swag has beat the Pac-12. Yes. Uh, wow. And it's been some other, like, uh, Chamonix beat Louisville the other night. Uh, it's been a lot of, like, small schools beating high major schools. Why do you think that is? is? Is college basketball getting to a point where a lot of these high major coaches, they're, they're, they're missing when they're going to recruit some of these kids, going off rankings? Or is it a transfer portal that's getting these smaller schools better? What, what's, your, what's your thought process as it pertains to why a lot of these small schools starting to upset these big schools? Just, I feel like people be punking. Like, swag schools, punk, starting to punk a lot of power fives. And it's like, you know, people be going crazy about somebody dunk. Like, yep. people will recruit you if you dunk. But that's a good point. Do you play defense and be? Are, are you able to make sh- open shots, make shots, like stuff like that? I feel like swag schools, they 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 together. So I mean, they, you know, they ain't no pushovers. So they gonna mm-hmm. they gonna play D, be in your face, and. It's hard to make shots when you going against a team like that's gonna do that. Right. When when you already know when you, when all you can do is when you know. So you, you play you played some high major schools like last year. Y'all played Florida State. When mm-hmm. You had a good game. What are the high major schools y'all played last year? Houston. 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 Memphis. Memphis. I'm talking about nine conference. Uh, who played Toledo? Toledo who played against Ryan Rollins. Uh huh. He went here with the Warriors. Yep. That's it, though. Y'all played no. Y'all played some other high major schools, oh, non-conference. I can't. I can't remember on, off the top of the dome. But I think y'all played Nevada this year as a non-conference. Well, they play them in the, in the Caymans. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Caymans Islands coming up. But uh, when you go against them high major schools, do you see a difference? Mm. Like even when you was at LSU, like did you see a difference when you when y'all was playing? You know the Tennessees and the Kentuckys of the world. Did you see like I right, yeah this definitely. This is definitely a, a, a high, high, some high level basketball players. I definitely seen the difference when we played Bama, mm-hmm. for sure. I, and it's just like really for me, With the Jelly Queen King. <laughs> mm-hmm. JQ was kill. They was killing too. Like it, for me, it was like kind of different. Herb Jones on that team. Herb yeah, on that yep. team, playing playing D like just logging. You logging knew he up. was a pro. Yeah. <laughs> you can see it now. You can see that his his defensive. Like, like he has that. I don't want. I don't like comparing him to Kawhi, but he has that Kawhi like defense when he first came into San Antonio. Mm-hmm. Like it's right. infectious. It's like he wants to attack you on that in hard. Right. And and Big Bro really really went at him too. Like, cause the first two games when we played Bama, Big bro, like Trent, Trent, Trent. Trent. like okay. the first two games when we played Bama, Herb was on, on like Herb was locking up like. That's when I was like, yeah, her played deep. But Trent went got 30 that last game. Come on. We played him in the championship on him. All them buckets was on him. So, I feel like it was different. The uh, I seen I seen a different, like, higher like higher teams. Because, I mean, it was, it was a different atmosphere from high school, mm-hmm. from being at Walker and stuff. So, I kind of was, like, a little unexperienced. But – now, now, I mean, it's it's really the same as AAU. Like it's the same kind kind of competition and stuff. So it's not really it's not really that different. 
Yeah, like when I really look at it. Right. So, do you think? Because. All right, so like I watch all levels of basketball. I watch NAI, yeah. I watch Southland Conference, I want I watch Sunbuilt. And I think the only difference is like I feel like a lot of people disrespect Southland Conference, Sunbelt yeah. Conference, uh, you know, the smaller conferences. And I tell kids all the time that that wanna, you know, play high major yeah, basketball. Mm -hmm. And I be telling them like, bro, them dudes be good in the Southland Conference. Sure. Them dudes be good in the Sun Belt Conference. Like, y'all disrespecting these conferences. Like, these dudes don't be good. The difference is, I feel like the depth, like the high major schools got more depth. Yeah. And I feel like the high major schools got more size. Like, at Nichols or UNO or Southeastern. Right, size play a big role. Yeah, they bigs be like 6'8". Right. Six, they be really good. Right. But they be 6'8", six, 6'7". Six, so when you go play a LSU or... You know, they, they Alabama. Have, they have a couple of six ten players. Yeah, now you're mm -hmm. going against six ten, six eleven bigs that like and you know, there's no three seconds in the lane mm -hmm. like it is in the NBA. And those bigs could just sit down sit there down and there. just protect the room. Right. You see what I'm saying? Is and I think that's the only difference. When you just talk about skill, man, them dudes be just as skilled as them high major kids. That's just my opinion. Just me watching all brands of basketball. Yeah, for sure. Like you, you definitely gotta come to play every game. Every game you gotta Yo. come to play. I just think a lot of these kids that can play at those big time programs, if you start watching them when they're getting recruited, they're all trying to create a highlight. They're trying to create a highlight for people to catch on to, so people can watch the reel. And, you know, they're trying to create that play where they're so focused on creating the play where they're not playing the game. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, damn, man, he had that play. He did this play. He did this play. Yeah, but those are the only three highlights he had. But the guy he was guarding dropped 30. Or right. in. Because he dropped 30, you ain't got to watch all his highlights. He going to show you on both ends of the flow. So a lot of guys are getting recruited based upon them creating a highlight. But when they finally get in that environment and realize that their coach make them play both ends of the flow and make them do certain things, you're like, dang, why, why this guy ain't really doing this at this level? Yeah, because this is not about a highlight no more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Real gotta, talk. You got to do this. Real, real, real talk. You got to do this now. And so ain't anybody going to let you create no highlight either. Right. You know what I mean? So it, it, it gets harder and harder and harder for that kid. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Versus if you take somebody like for you, for example, who would go out there and get buckets and do your thing, and it all may not be all flashy, it may not be all highlights, right. but it's hard to guard you. It's right. hard to play against you because it's about the game. Right. <laughs> right. It's about the game. Right. It ain't winning about losing. Yeah, it's about, winning. Winning. it's about me, us winning and me not losing and my team not losing versus – Man, I'm, I'm not playing basketball to create this highlight, create this highlight. That gets you so far. Right. When you get to that pro level, that, that don't matter. <laughs> I like to think I'm a real good evaluator, evaluator of talent. I know me and Cook kind of go back and forth about. Boy, he think know, Kyrie Irving top 10 point of all time. Who we think good? I don't, I don't I like that. It, it, it probably was a little stretch, but I, I, I like stretch. Kyrie. Stretch. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. But, you know, me and Cook, we always go back and forth about certain – you know, whether it's a kid in high school, whether it's somebody in the league, somebody in college, we always go back and forth about who we think good, who we, who we don't think good, blah, blah, whatever. But the point I want to make and what I want to ask you is, I remember the first time I watched you play when you was in ninth grade at Walker. Y'all was playing Ellender from my hometown in, mm -hmm. at Southern. Um, I thought you had like 14 that game. But I remember that. what I watched, because I had heard about you from, from Kyron, Lacey. Mm -hmm. Kyron had my told dog. me like, yeah, Kyron Lacey, shout out to Kyron Lacey. My but dog. he told me, he had been told me about you, like, when he was in eighth grade, he was like, man, man, got a dude I play with on, what was the name of y'all team? Sports uh, Academy. Sports Academy, got a dude on my team for Sports Academy. He was like, man, Jalen Cook, bro, man, this dude be doing all kind of stuff, man. He be making all kind of miraculous shots, and, man, we be down 15. He come back and score 16 straight, we win. Like, he, he was telling me all these little stories. So when I found out y'all was playing Ellis, I said, man, let me go see this dude play, man. Kyron been talking about this dude, talking about this dude good like this. And I, know, I for some reason, I don't think I ever asked him how tall you was. I think I just assumed you was, like, tall. Mm -hmm. So I get to the game, I'm like, which one Jalen Cook? So they was like, 30, you were 34, huh? 34. I'm like, it was like number 34. I'm like, man, this dude, <laughs> this is the dude Kyron talking about. <laughs> but, but, um, me and my partner, Kurt Townsend, was there. I don't know if you remember Coach Kurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we watching you play, and I know 14 might not sound like a big, big game, 
But it wasn't even about the 14. It was the way you scored the 14. It was the way you was being up. It was the passes you was making. It was the mm-hmm. reads you was making on ball screens. It was your poise. That's what I noticed. It was the intangibles. Right. Just the way you like, yo, your presence on the court. I'm mm-hmm. like, to the normal eye, they probably looking at, okay. Whatever. It's for, it's straight. Right. Straight. But I saw something in you that day, right? And so I right. followed you ever since then. I, what I always liked about your game was you always had a high level of basketball IQ. And I feel like in today's game, and I talk to my son about this all the time, I feel like kids' IQ for the game is so low. They don't. Some kids don't even know how to come off a ball screen. Some kids don't even know how to make that skip pass to the corner when they're coming, they coming downhill. Um, just small little intricate parts of the game kids don't know, and I think it's part of what you were saying, Fred. A lot of kids watching highlights. Right. Like my son, he mm-hmm. can't sit down and watch a whole, a whole game. game. He, if he sit down and watch a game, he might watch four minutes, three minutes of the quarter, and, man, he, he on out. his phone or he going in the right. back to play the game. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why a lot of kids' IQ so low. Where do, you, where do you get your IQ from? And were you one of those kids that sat down and, and watch a whole game with your dad and really study film and, and study your opponent? So when you got in the game, you was able to make those right reasons, those right pleas. Yeah, like like I said, just starting early, really just playing since I was three and just loving the game. So I always watched with my pops, always watched CP3 when he was at the Hornets, stuff like that. Just And I started playing AAU at seventh grade, in second grade. So it was just I had to, at a high level, we played, we played against the best. So I had to be able to shoot the floater. Like just make make the extra pass, like be able to steal steal the ball on defense and stuff like that. Like just just starting at a young age. You know, so like, you've been like sitting on yeah. watching games. I used, used to love watching games, like watch games for sure. Like yeah, yeah, that's for, that's a sure. big, that's a big difference between these kids now. I mean, these kids will watch a, they'll come back, they'll they'll start, they'll watch the game, they'll watch the first, they'll watch the starters, and they'll leave. Mm-hmm. Right, <laughs> then they all will come back with six minutes left in the game and tell you everything about it. Like, dog, you didn't watch the whole game. That's what I'm saying. It's crazy. That's what I'm it's, saying. It's crazy. Like, we used to sit down and really watch a whole game <laughs> <laughs> you know, from front to back. People can tell you what happened in the third quarter yeah. with, with six minutes left. Like, why that matter? That matter. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Like, I, I coach a middle school team, and like, my players always be coming back and be like, because they know I'm a Rockets fan. Mm-hmm. Man, I saw the Rockets, blah, blah, blah. Don't know Y'all why. got whooped. And I'll be like this. What happened in the second quarter when when Ty Ty uh, watched they got in the game and he went against Dane? What happened? Uh, man, y'all watch the highlights, right. man. That's y'all ain't even watch the game. Ain't watch the game. Right. Come and t- or y'all just go click the box school. That's it. You know what I'm saying? And y'all they, don't even they, know they, what they happened in the game. The game. And no. stuff I used to do was like YouTube. Use you like use YouTube. Like they got a lot of stuff on YouTube. Just pick and pick and roll situations. Mm-hmm. You know what kind of pass to make, mm-hmm. like looking at people dribble when they pressured. Like mm-hmm. I used to look at Tremont a lot. Tremont Waters. Oh Waters. yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. Cause he used to kill the LSU mm-hmm. his first two years. He, mm-hmm. he be killing y'all in practice. Mm-hmm. You probably wasn't there yet. No, I wasn't there. I wasn't there yet. You never worked out with him. Him and Scott I've never, I've never seen him. him. Scott Amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I went to I went to the games though. Yeah, I were and I remember like. That's my, yeah, it was last year. We were talking about a particular high school kid, right? And a lot of people in the state were saying he was one of the best, all the best in the state. Because if you just watch highlights, you would really think that. Right. Right? And me and Cook was talking. Who? Who? I'm talking about. A, 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 kid, a high school kid. I ain't going to say his name. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why you can't say his name? <laughs> because I didn't think he was that good. I didn't think he was that good. I thought yeah. he was really, I thought he was really athletic, but I didn't think he was that good. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, it, it, it goes to my point. Mm-hmm. People just was watching the highlights, highlights, watching the highlights, and I'm like, bro, go watch a whole game of the kid. I'm not saying he can't play, play? but I don't think he is good as y'all think he is. Oh right. man, you know what I'm saying? But that's what you know. Like you say, somebody see a kid donking. They just automatically think, oh, this this kid is a high major kid, man. Can this kid read a read a, a read a defense? Can he make the right pass? Right. Can he make shots? Can he can he ha- can he use his left hand? 
Like that's a that's a that's another laws art I've been noticing with a lot of kids. Oh. Like, dude can't even go left. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. can't even go left. There a lot of kids who can't go left. Listen, it, listen. it, it ain't always been like nah, that. My left, I gotta get my left as strong as it need to be. You feel like you don't? I, I thought you always. You finished lit yesterday with a left. I did, but <laughs> I, I I did finish with right too. But I mean, it was, yeah, yeah, right handed. Things are just a little more comfortable. Uh huh. Yeah, things are a little more comfortable. But let me ask you one last question before we get ready to run. When you start, forget all that. What about these pals? <laughs> Think we can make a run this year? For sure. What what our record is right now? I think they seven and five. Seven and five. They beat they they beat the Grizzlies and they beat the Bulls last they beat night. Beat the Bulls last night. I think they like seven and five. Somewhere around there. If we for sure should were, for yeah. sure. I th- we got the team. You we think got... conference finals or NBA conference finals? finals? Warriors. You know he he a stuff fan. Of course. Warriors. You know they they coming out here Monday night. Gonna deal with them. They, they coming they coming down here Monday night. Oh yeah. They coming out here Monday night. That's gonna be so. They got, they, they, got, they, got, they got Boston tomorrow night. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah. That's why Zion ain't played these last two games. <laughs> Look, that's why they try, they try to get him rested up for, for yeah, the Warriors yeah. and the Celtics. Yes. I think, I think, I think, I think uh, Pelicans for sure could get what second round, third round, second round, second round. That's that's a, that's the semis. I'm talking about conference final. I'm talking about I mean, down to four teams. You think they can beat uh, Curry? And the I mean. <sighs> I don't think they could beat the Warriors in a seven game series. I, don't th- I, I I think it, they need one more year yeah, together. Like yeah. with Brandon Ingram, Zion, CJ, they need one, they need this year to give them that confidence. Like they got a little confidence last year going against um Phoenix. Phoenix without mm-hmm. Zion. Right. So that's gonna propel them to probably to possibly get to a conference finals. You get your head beat in probably by the Warriors. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think if they can and escape, then next year. Yeah. If they can escape Golden State. Because you gotta think about round. it, Golden State gonna lose. And Luca. I don't I, think I, Dallas like that. Luka not losing like that either, I, though. Yeah, like, I, I don't. I don't losing, really. Bro. I don't, I'm gonna tell you something. I don't respect Dallas. I don't respect Dallas. And I don't respect the Grizzlies. I feel like last year they snuck up on some people. Yeah, but I don't think they can duplicate what they did. You don't respect the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies tough too, though. I'm gonna like, tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. Too. The way the way John ja Morant, the way John ja Morant played the game, I feel like when, by the time the playoffs come, his body gonna be. Exhausted, he, he, and he going he gonna be sore everywhere, man. He falling every night. He played like reckless. His he body. gonna take. He, he, I mean, he probably probably gonna rest. I mean, the, if, his, you, if you rest too much, y'all might end up as a six seed. Here's the problem. Right. Here's the problem. You want to you want to host that 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 first round game. I thought Dylan Brooks was gonna be an all star. Oh, yeah. I was wrong. I remember that coming out of Oregon. I told yeah. you that ball's a role player. I gotta tell you this. <laughs> I was wrong. Not an all star. Nah, he, he, I thought he was nice too. Like, I thought, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he caught me. Dylan Brooks caught me. You gotta the, see how it's gonna translate. Nah, yeah, he's nice. Nah, he's nice though. He's he nice. Nice role, but bro. yeah, that's what he's become. And then Desmond Bain. I, I, listen, I love his game, but I don't think he's an all star. You so, don't think like he gonna be able to be like? No, they need so, another playmaker. They need another They're playmaker. They need another playmaker, bro. So I'm with G. It's hard for me to be like, man. Let's put Memphis here. Jared Jackson. He about to come back. He's about to come. He stays injured. And to me, he's not an all-star. You know, he can rebound. Good player, though. He's a good player. Good player. Mm-hmm. Versatility. Good player. Versatility. But he's not going to be an all-star. So, 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 so for right. me, Ja is going to need a second guy. To me, Desmond And Bain, he don't even have to be an all-star. Right. But he just needs a... Yeah, he going to need... He going to need, gonna need another... Yeah, like, yeah, just... Bro. He, he going to need another guy. Yeah, and so when I look at the Pelicans... I'm like they could beat Memphis, definitely. So, yeah, to me, now the Pelicans really now, now that I look at it, like they 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 a team that they, they 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 team built for the playoffs. Yes. For sure. I feel like if they can escape, yes. I feel for like sure. they can avoid the Warriors to the conference finals. Yeah, I agree. Then I think they can make it. But if they run a, if they run to the Warriors, obviously I think they lose. But if they mm-hmm. got to avoid, I think they can make the con- if they can avoid them. I think they could beat Memphis. I think, even think this year they could beat Phoenix. Or right. me too. Healthy. Me they got to be healthy. They can't go in there without Kyle Zion. Cox. Yeah. They got to be cocked. I think they got to get another five, though. No, nah, they got Jackson Hayes. He, 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 he ain't been minutes, man. He ain't been playing. He ain't been playing because Larry Nance. Yeah, definitely. So that's but the, you, Jackson Hayes going to be somebody yeah. that ain't going to play too much during the regular season, and when the playoffs come, they going to use him a lot. Man, he could switch on pick and roll. Yes. Like, that's big in the playoffs. big in the playoffs. Because everybody trying to get that matchup. You know what I'm saying? So, Valachuna is... What y'all think about him? 
Offensively, offensively, I, he, 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 he that deal. He that deal. Defensively, when you put him in pick and roll, he's a liability. liability. <laughs> he's a liability. I ain't gonna lie to you. Mm-hmm. He rebound at a high level, but I, you yeah. can't take him off the floor for too long because he's so good offensively. He a good passer. Sure. He just do so many things if, if that, they that, face that help Phoenix, the team. If they face Phoenix, he could get bugs. He could get buckets, yeah, but, but Aiton gonna eat if he stays out there too long. So you gonna have to put somebody on Aiton that that can make him make a tough shot. So y'all count CP out. I just, I just don't think. <laughs> Absolutely. I just don't think. I, 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 absolutely. If we going off of, if we you going off of, y- y- yes. it ain't, it ain't yeah. about. I'm counting him out. If you just going off of his past, his past playoff, you know, yes, playoff experiences, <laughs> yes. bro. He always hurt, bro. Yes. yes. He yes. always hurt, bro. Yes. Kind of like some always happens. Hand. His hand. He gonna be his it, foot. Mm, right now, they got a. They 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 definitely. They, they definitely this day this the year they gonna go on a run though. They gonna try to go on a run Listen, for it though. For I'm sure. counting them out. Let me yeah, tell they you. Gonna blow, out? they gonna blow it up if it don't work this year. Yeah, yeah. to me it's just I have nothing against CP. I'm a, me too. I love CP. Love him. Love him to death. At some point in time, hey, yeah. you run across these young bulls. This is a young man's game. You run across these young bulls. CP time was obviously when they made it and they lost him in Walker. But really, his time was when they had when he blew that hammy. He had Golden State on the ropes. That when him and Harden. Remember, we was uh, we was in New Jersey. That was that mm-hmm. year. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. the year. Mm-hmm. If he don't three pull two. that hammy, three, three, three two. Three that two. was the year. I tried to tell his boy. That was the year. He's like, man, the Warriors gonna sweep y'all. I said, bro, no. bro, you. Tripping. That was the year. Chris Paul by the. By the elevators to another CP level. CP should have played, bro. Bro, he tore his he hamstring. He tore his hamstring. He couldn't play. You dealing with a hamstring. You already know how that feel. <laughs> he couldn't play. If CP3 don't and look, we, him, we, we went up 3 2. He was, he was, he was going like, back to Houston. He still should have played. Man, Can't. nah, bro. They would have they they took advantage of it. Yo, yeah. you got to th- think about it. That's when they had Kevin Durant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. They had him beat. And hey. what's so crazy about that? We was up 17 without him in that, game, in that closeout game. And Warriors came back and beat us. What y'all yeah, think about the Clippers? I thought John Wall was going to look like the old John Wall. He hasn't. Now, he still look good, but he don't look like the old John Wall. I just. They going to be tough. But if they Kawhi, healthy? Kawhi on his, on his low management shit, man. No. You got you to you gotta build chemistry. No. You can't wait till the right, playoffs right, to be like, right. let's no. get it together. No. You, you know what I'm saying? It, there's, too so much, I, there's too much chemistry in basketball yeah, that needs yeah. to happen. If Kawhi, if Kawhi come back around the All-Star break and John Wall. PG healthy. So, yeah, he held it. Yeah. If John Walker looked even anything close to how he looked when he was in Washington, maybe. I, I can't I, – I, I, coaching-wise, I don't want to discount Teron Lue and what he can help them become. The issue is the stars got to be healthy for 80% of the season. Yeah. This mm-hmm. enough, that Western Conference is – when you got Golden State, now the Pelicans. Uh, I wouldn't want to play Utah. I, I – you I wouldn't word want out my mouth. I would not want to play. Them. I would not want to play. Scrap them. it. Don't mm-hmm. really have no big name. They're gonna be playing like they don't have nothing. They, they don't have nothing to lose. lose. Nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. I don't want to play nobody like that. Right. <laughs> don't want nothing to lose. I don't want to play, play them people. They playing too loose. That dude, uh, uh, Lauren. Um, I can't pronounce his last name. To save my life. Colin Sexton. Colin Hooping. Sexton. Who? Uh, Talking about the kid that came from uh the Cavs. The tree. Yes. Um, Clarkson. Clarkson. Jordan Clarkson. Um, and so Kelly Olynyk. They ain't got nothing to lose. I don't want to play them. They scrappy. Um, so when you look at them, the Pels, obviously Memphis. I wouldn't want to play the Timberwolves, even though they're not playing how they how they want to play. Ball playing, I wouldn't want to play them. They just got two centers. Hey. So I'm, I'm discounting them. Who the best wide receiver in the game? Jamal Chase. Now, and, and I know some people are gonna say Jets, which I, I would not. I would not discredit anybody if you say Jets. You still I got would Jamal. Not. But I, me, I just. I just like Jamal. I think Jamal don't Chattis have. is different. Yeah, he is. I'm going to tell you something. Well, you seen what you, did you watch the game, what he did against the Bills? I've been watching him all season. He's been killing. Listen, listen. Jamal I, been hurt the last listen, three weeks. I, I, I'm going to say this, and it's. He about to get paid. It's 30 plus million. He about to get paid. He'll be the highest paid receiver. But the answer to your question is, is Jamal. You got Jamal? Let me tell you why. Why? No one can make his play. I got Jamar too, but it's it's, no. it's getting it's no, getting. no no no. Like if somebody tell me Justin Jefferson, I'm not gonna be like I'm not gonna tripping. No, I'm not gonna be. I'm gonna be like I, I feel you. I feel you. I'm just taking Jamar. Jets Jamar's putting cheese. that work in. Yeah. No Jets. Jets, Jets can, put Jets that work can do in, it all, bro. Like, but let me tell you something about Jamar. Jamar is starting to come to the place where Jets can make every play, but he don't control the defense like Jamar does. Jamar is at a point in his career where 
You need to know what Uno is out in that field. Uno, what Uno can do is catch that ball and make somebody miss, and it's 60 yards, and the score didn't he change. He can take it eight at any given in time. any given time. Mm-hmm. Dog, you know how hard that is? To, you know Jets can. And he do it against bracket coverage. I'm going to go I'm gonna go Jettas now. I changed my mind. I got to go Jettas. He putting that work in. Yeah, I feel you on that. No, I, and they I, seven and one right it, now. Well, they eight and one right yeah, now. It's hard the for me. It's hard for me to tell you on the road. And he, what do he had? One hundred and forty <laughs> yards. One hundred and forty yeah. yards. A touchdown. He had the. And he had the, the catch. catch the, oh, that was four I got, downs. I gotta go Jets. That bro. was four down, bro. When you look That's at four to twelve. Here's the thing: <laughs> when you look at Jets, there's nothing. That, there's no weaknesses in what he can do. I'm just saying that Chase can make that play. I'm telling you the plays I'm watching from Chase. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about. The catch, not the catch, but just when he when he get that ball in his hands and how he can make defenders miss and get to that end zone, yeah. no one can no make problem. that play in this league. The only guy who can make that play in this league, and it's because of how explosive he Tyree is, Hill. is Tyreek Hill. But Tyreek Hill ain't the receiver that neither one of those two guys are. Yeah, right. I agree with that. It's Chase. His ceiling is so high. That dude gives me, like, the, the vibes of, like, when I say Ardell first came in, I'm like, can't nobody make them plays. Yeah. I'm looking at Chase, I'm like, dog. Can't nobody make that dude play. I know a lot of people say, like, certain dudes be, like, different. They nah, different. Nah. Chase Jamal is different. Chase, really Jamal Chase Jamal is really different. Like, he's, he's different. different. But it, I feel different. like, hey, you, hey, you got to put that behind you now. Yeah. yeah. I just think and when he's Jettis, on the field. Jettis, Jettis, Jettis is put, they put gonna be, They're going to be the, they gonna be the number one and number two yeah, high paid receivers sure. in the league. Jettis put together two great years, and yeah. now he's still, like, hungry. Like, there's no, there's nothing there's nothing that Jets can't do in terms of when he's running routes and getting separation and open. Now he don't run. Now nah, Jamal Chase don't run better routes. He than don't run Jets. better routes than him. Nah. No, but that, again, that's like when I thought Randy Moss was the best person receiving the league. He wasn't the best route runner. They got guys like Marvin Harrison mm-hmm. who who ran better routes, but right. no one could make that play. Right. That's right. what made Moss Moss. And right. I'm looking at Jamal Chase and I'm watching his receive. I'm saying. Nobody can move. Like Nobody move. can make his play, dog. Yeah. When he, and when, and what happens is when he makes his play, it looks you, different. Like, it looks different, and you knew that that play could cause y'all to lose. Yeah. Last one, not saying he against the Saints. It, it, it come, he made a deep yeah. missing Tyrant. Yeah. It's six, but yeah. but it come at a clutch moment. It, it, this is old. Yeah. He got ice water. This in is old. For sure. Yeah, so that's that's. It's a tough question, but it's until he can't make that play no more. This when I turn the angle, but it's it's if somebody told me, man, it's Justin Jefferson, I ain't about to argue with him. Me either. I ain't about to argue with him. Like, I, is, I, I feel you. I Jetta's feel you. Putting that work in, bro. Just, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to hold him. I ain't about to stick him. Like, yeah. Yo, yeah. If you tell me on, if somebody had a if somebody could beat one on one coverage better, I would probably tell you Jets. But who could beat a defense better? Or it's Chase. No, oh. it's Jamar. Yeah. That, 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 that's how I'm looking at it. Chase could beat a defense better than Justin. Right. Justin would beat a one-on-one coverage better. Because mm-hmm. right. you can't really guard him one-on-one. Like, he's going to mess over you. But he don't really beat the defense when he make a lot of those plays. Chase going to beat that guy. <laughs> Y'all two in trouble here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't let that ball. Hold LSU, right. LSU definitely putting on when it, as it pertains to wide receiver you. Yeah. For definitely sure. putting on. Definitely for putting sure. on. Y'all leave for the for the Cayman, Cayman Islands? Mm-hmm. When y'all leave Saturday? Saturday. Four days. So y'all gotta check. Y'all, y'all play Nevada first round. If y'all win that, y'all play the winner out of Kansas State and Illinois. Nah, not Illinois. Somebody else. And so you would have a chance to play against your former team, LSU, if y'all make it to the championship. And mm-hmm. they keep winning too. A little more vision for you. Mm-hmm. Yep. My dog Cook, man. <laughs> Definitely gonna be tuned in, man. Uh be good luck to you the rest of the season, man. Rest that hand me up, bro. And uh I know the best is yet to come for you, dog. Sure. Listen. Yeah. Y'all already know what it is, man. Listen. Jalen Cook, two lane point guard. Unless we got a high host, man. First of all, man, baby, appreciate you doing the Fan View podcast, man. You've been a you've done this show now. I think the third time. Third time. Third time. Oh, no, I'm rocking with y'all, man. <laughs> you know that, man. You know, that is your thir- that. third time, man. We we'll, we deeply appreciate you coming on in, man. I'm happy that we sure. got the set changed up. You able to come on in actually in the studio and, and and record this show, man. We appreciate it. We, we're looking out for you, brother. And I think sure. there's a lot of your ceiling is very, very, very high. Like I said, you put a lot of people on notice last year for Tulane, and we expect big things from you, man. And hope to see you, you continue your journey, your basketball journey. Hope to see you at some point 
playing at that next level to the NBA level, man. No doubt, sure. man. Mm-hmm. Speaking into sure. existence. Absolutely. Make sure y'all share, like, share it to another friend. Tell your other friend to share it. And uh, make sure y'all subscribe, man, to G Sports and, and the FanView page, man. Yes. Sure. And, 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 and watch. Like, we're telling y'all to do with basketball. <laughs> watch the whole thing. Just don't watch the highlights and the reels, man. Right. But the highlights and the reels coming, though. Believe that. Yes, sir. <laughs> no vibes. Listen, man, it's Fan View Podcast, episode six, man. We're signing out. Till next time. Y'all already know what it is. <laughs>